Okay, in this video we want to talk about subgroups of a group. So the definition goes like this. So given a group G, a subset H of G is called a subgroup if shortly it's a group uh, itself. But uh, in more details, it is closed under the operation. So in other words, if A, B are in H, then A times B is in H. It contains the identity and it contains all of the necessary inverses. So if A is an element of H, then A inverse is an element of H. And the notation that we generally use is this notation that looks like less than or equal to. So it looks like H is less than or equal to G, but if you're talking about groups, you read that as H is a subgroup of G. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So let's first suppose that H is a subgroup of Z, and let's say addition is our operation. And we're actually going to get a, a form for H, in other words, a form for all subgroups of H, sorry, of all subgroups of Z. Now the next thing we want to do is let's let N in H be the smallest positive number. So if we look at only the positive numbers in H, then that means um, we're looking at a subset of the natural numbers, but all subsets of the natural numbers contain a smallest element, so we'll let N be that smallest element. Now the next thing that we want to do is let's let M in H be any other element. Okay, so we've got a smallest positive number in H. Now, notice there may not be a positive number in H. It's always possible for H just to be the identity, but let's suppose that H is not just the identity, and so we can maybe write that over here. H is not just the trivial group, in other words, uh, the group containing only zero. Great. Now the next thing that we want to do is perform the division algorithm with um, M and N. So we're going to divide M by N. So we can write M equal N times Q plus R. But recall that the division algorithm gives us a size constraint on R. R is bigger than or equal to zero, but it is strictly less than n. Great. But now we can rewrite this equation a little bit. And notice that here we have um, r equals m minus n minus n minus minus n. And this is q times. Great. So, but notice this writes R as a combination of things in H. We assumed M was in H, and then we assumed N was in H also. So what that tells us is that M minus N minus N, and so on and so forth, that is also an element in H. Great. But notice that R is strictly less than N, which means R is not allowed to be positive because N is the smallest positive number in H. So it follows that R is in fact zero. Great. So what that tells us is that if we take any element um, from the subgroup, it is a multiple of the smallest positive number of the subgroup. Okay, great. So now I want to clean up the board and then we will summarize this thing that we just discovered. Okay, so let's see what we, saw, what we came up with on the last board. So here's our summary. Any element m of h, which is a subgroup of the integers with addition, is a multiple of n, where n is the smallest positive element from h. In other words, h is equal to n times z. So this is exactly um, the same thing as what we wrote up there in the sentence. This is um, n 
times, I don't know, maybe we could use k, where k runs through all elements from the integers. Okay, great. So we have um, classified all subgroups of um, the integers. So for example, we could have 2z, which is going to be equal to 0, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, so on and so forth. We could have 5z, which is equal to 0, plus minus 5, plus minus 10, and so on and so forth. So every subgroup of the integers must be of one of these forms. Okay, good. So now I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at a couple more examples of subgroups. Okay, so now that we did a big example classifying all subgroups of Z, so let's just recall that we had um, all subgroups of, of Z were of the form NZ. I wanna go through quickly and give you some other examples of subgroups. So first of all, let's say G is any group. Then you could have two uh, subgroups that are true for any group, and that is the trivial subgroup. So that is just containing the identity, so that's known as the trivial subgroup. And another one would be the whole group. So that's also a subgroup of the group. Great, now let's say we have multiplicative uh, complex numbers. So in other words, all complex numbers except for zero. So this would be C, and then we usually put a X up there or a cross up there to mean multiplicative. So this is all A plus B I, where A and B are real numbers, not both zero. So it's easy to check that this is a group. Um, I'll let you guys check that this is a group. You can find the inverses fairly um, um, quickly and you know, know what the identity is as well. So now we've got a nice subgroup structure of this as follows. So um, first of all, we could have all non-zero rational numbers. So that's a subgroup of all non-zero real numbers. And that's a subgroup of all non-zero complex numbers. So that would be one way to do it. Another thing is something called the circle group, which is sometimes called S1. So this is a subgroup of the multiplicative complex numbers as well. And this S1 is given by all complex numbers whose modulus is one. So that happens on the unit circle. Okay, good. So uh, now maybe uh, one more would be, let's say we have um, SL2R. So these are all two by two matrices with determinant one. And this is a subgroup of GL2R. And that is all two by two matrices with, de with determinant not equal to zero. So that's kind of obviously a subgroup as well. Okay, so uh, this is a good place to stop this video.